Hey YouTube, well I wanted to show you all this 2004 Chrysler Crossfire with 94,000 miles on it. This one's the automatic, it's not the six-speed manual as uh, Crossfires began coming with. Now some of you already know my opinion evolving around the Crossfire, um, it's not that great, but I just wanted to show you all this car as um, I have a more updated camera, as it was so long ago that um, I toured a Crossfire, and it was during the days when I had the iPod Nano, which had awful video quality. Um, I had some behind the wheel time driving a Crossfire belonging to a friend of a friend. It was the six-speed manual, fortunately, and I'd have to say it was a fast-ass car and it handled well, but the interior was just pure crap. And when my friend and I had some boogie time with the car, both of us are six feet one, we just had trouble um, getting comfortable inside this car. It's just impossible to be comfortable in the Crossfire for over six feet tall. Uh, the clutch pedal, you're just gonna end up banging your leg on the door panel and it will also rub against the cover to the steering column underneath. I'll show you what I mean by that. So yeah, I mean, I drove it for about a good five, six miles and it was just stressful. I think a 230 mile drive in a typical sedan would have been far less stressful than driving it for five miles in the Crossfire. Now remember the Chrysler Crossfire is based off the first generation Mercedes SLK, lightly based off the Mercedes C-Class W202 generation. Take a look inside. Now one of the biggest flaws with the Crossfire is uh, the interior quality, even in the SLK. It was just so bad. I just can't understand why they fell short in that, even in Mercedes, considering Mercedes has such high standards. Materials on the door panel, they're good. It's just spot on. The side is cushiony, even the armrest. Though, you have to be careful with these razor blade-like door handles. You can see right there how the chrome just bubbling right there. Um, I have cut my finger in the tour that I did on Crossfire, so beware with that. Here's the key fob. Of course, the metal key flips right out, like so. Lock, unlock, and panic functions. Yeah, these seats are just hard as a rock, and you really have no room to roll the seat back or even recline as well. Um, right now, I have it where I think I would feel comfortable driving it, and just take a look at where my leg rubs. So, yeah, you can see how it's just impossible right there, unless I have to scoot back as much as I can, and I can somewhat make some room. But you can see what I mean by trying to operate a clutch pedal if this car had the manual gearbox. Um, it was just so uncomfortable. You just have no wiggle room to operate a clutch. And just check out the, the dashboard over here. Everything is just so plasticky right there. It's just so bad. I could even move it up and down with my leg. Just moves up and down. Close the door, and you can see how much more squished my leg will be. So, yeah, there's just no room for tall drivers operating a clutch pedal in here. So I guess I'd recommend an automatic when it comes to a crossfire. Um, anyways, the dashboard is cushiony. They were spot on with that. Now look at this ugly glove box lid. I've seen quite a few crossfires and I even took a picture of one where the lid over here was cracked. Um, I think that is the damping function for the glove box. Um, again, oops, wow, what the hell? Let me fold this back. Yeah, that helps. Yeah, these lids do crack apart and also the paint finish comes right off. These disgusting glossy gray pieces of plastic right there they become ugly and they begin chipping off, as you can see right there. Here's the climate control. This is the same from my C-Class, by the way. It has the dual zone. There's no automatic functions, by the way. The radio infinity sound system has the CD seat heaters. Bring up the rear wing and back. You can see it go up and down right there. There you go. Should come up at 60 miles an hour. That was actually quite cool to see come up when I pushed it over 60 um, in my friend's car. Stability and traction control, hazards, door locks, passenger side heated seat, the power outlet or cigarette lighter. It wasn't a smoker. Deactivate the airbag. Push this over here. This is supposed to be an ashtray. Um, it doesn't come out all the way as it should. This flips down, this flips out and you can see the coin holder. <laughs> my friend accidentally pushed this in when we went during our test drive and it stayed stuck in. And then when we finally dislatched it, the thing stayed stuck open and we couldn't push it back inwards anymore. So yeah, that was quite unfortunate. Um, here's the gearbox. It has the 722.6 five-speed automatic, which is 
a very reliable and rock solid five speed automatic gearbox from Mercedes um, that you'd even find it in the Sprinter cargo vans. So that's just how tough a gearbox that is. Has some manual shift functions right there, side to side. Power windows. Funny thing is, the crossfire that we drove, the up and down functions were inverted. Has auto down, but no auto up. Um, it was inverted when we pushed up, the windows went down, and when we pushed down, the windows went up. So that was quite interesting. Power mirror controls, e-brake. Ooh, that was stuck. This e-brake wasn't used in a while. Uh, what's this supposed to be? Come up. There we go. Uh, I don't know. Was this supposed to be a cup holder or something? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, that's supposed to be a cup holder, I guess. Rest of the center console, it's not cushiony at all. Somewhat jiggly. It has some storage, that's about it, but ye, this armrest is hard as a rock. The sun visor, rearview mirror dims, dome light, and the driver's side sun visor. Steering wheel is leather wrapped. It's nicely thick, but it has a steering wheel cover, but even without it, it's nicely thick. The cruise control function right there. Wipers, and it does telescope. It does not tilt. Just to slatch it right there. Headlamps pull for fogs and for parking lamps as well, for convenience. So look at the cargo area, it's very narrow. Um, it is quite deep and it does carry quite a few things. So, I mean, it does have a, a pretty decent form of utility, it's just that the access is just so narrow, it's quite bad. And as one of our favorite uh, journalists from the UK once said, it looks like a dog taking a dump, the arch back. Ooh, that lift support isn't working at all. Um, anyways, this is Mercedes 3.2 liter V6. has uh, 215 horsepower. You'll be surprised once you really get behind the wheel how quick it is. Uh, it is a pretty good engine. Um, nowadays, in today's terms, it's quite underwhelming. But since this is a light car, again, it's excused. There's a rev limiter. But anyways, YouTube, I just wanted to show you this car. As you guys saw, my opinions really haven't changed much on it, even though all this time has passed. You know, believe it or not, personally, I think the Crossfire itself from the outside is an attractive looking car. Even that arched rear dog taking a dump looking in the back end of this car. Um, again, it really does add a distinctive look. Um, there's just few cars out there that just look like this. So, I mean, the Crossfire does have something going for it. Um, it's just so unfortunate that um, it was just uh, such an uncomfortable car for tall drivers and the interior quality was just underwhelming, was just so bad. But anyways, YouTube, thanks for watching.